Trade deadline frenzy keeping rolling on. Probably the last real depth player that we're going to talk about in this list. It's another defenseman. <laughs> it's AJ's Bay. We're going to let AJ go first so he doesn't get mad at me again. Luke Shen. Uh, you've already sold the people on him, but just run it back for us. Yeah, I mean, Luke Shen is is he's having a, a solid uh, a solid year, but really uh, a solid year offensively. Really, though, like he's he's the physical right handed bottom pairing defenseman who's really cheap. Uh, that keeps you from having to sign Jack Johnson next year because he's signed for like 850k next season. Yeah, yeah, it's 850. And the appeal in that is it, some of your offseason work is done. The thing that you don't like is that that's Justin Barron's job. Yep. Right. So that it, the the contract is kind of the double edged sword in that way. But it, as a as a reliable defender that you throw out on a penalty kill uh, and and stop with the, maybe maybe not stop, but lessen the Sam Gerrard, Kale McCarr shifts that are taking place on the penalty kill right now. Dudes don't need to be playing 27 as, minutes a night. Well, as those as that unit continues to search for some success, yeah. uh, you, you do go and you get a guy like Shen and just hope that he's, you know, you believe, obviously if you make the deal for him, you believe he's going to be an improvement over the guys that you have. Okay. And just given what I've seen of him in Vancouver, I'm a lot more comfortable. It's interesting because when he he was drafted so highly, and he was gonna, always going to be a top pairing guy, and then never quite and got then to that right. Man. Well, and then it was like, oh, what what a huge disappointment. And then oh, he's not any good. And now he's in a role in which he's thriving in Vancouver as more of a depth guy. And for me, I look at him as he's in, he's injury insurance from two very oft injured players in Ryan Murray and Eric Johnson. And he's kind of your right-handed version of Jack Johnson, where if for what if, if Bowen Byram comes back, you have questions about who's gonna be in your lineup, what your ideal configuration is. And I think that's where Luke Shen is would an easy enter fit. into yeah. that. And the the when I when I when I when I first started kind of pushing the Luke Shen thing uh, Vancouver was way out of it and was not part of the conversation of the postseason. The Pacific is horrible. Things have gone really well with Bruce Boudreaux, so now they're back in it. Ish. There's not really, there's not really a lot of motivation for them on the day of this recording. Still several weeks out from the deadline, there's not really the motivation for them to move Shen. But if if they do decide, hey, this is this is a guy that we have to move then, or a guy that we have enough interest in that we do want to move. Uh, then, then I, if I'm the avalanche, I, I make that phone call. Yeah. Um, and the contract is so cheap that money is th not a consideration. Th that's, here. that's yeah. the part for me that, that makes it at least, you know, intrigue more intriguing is the, Talking about 850k. This yeah. is a, a it's a secondary move, right? The Avs go well, out and get a bigger name forward, and then they use this to shore up their. It's, it's also it's also saves them from having to make the summer move where they sign Jack right. Johnson, right. right? Like that answers that question next season as well. And that was that was where I thought that of that as a good thing at the time when I started talking about this, but getting into it more, it's like, well, Justin Barron is there. Eric Johnson's still going to be here next year. Like maybe he ends up just sort of accidentally in the way, and you're not you're not getting uh, the but, high end is not I mean, there. He's e limited. Even then, it, is Shen as a seventh D really that bad? Well, at eight fifty, no. Right. Like right. which guy? Which guy do you trust more to slot into your lineup and actually give you a quality night between McDermott and Luke Shen? Shen. <laughs> right. So that's, you know, maybe maybe that's where you move on from a McDermott at the end of the year as well, because, hey, that's your seventh guy. You're not worrying about Justin Barron. You're worrying about he's our healthy scratch option. Yes. Price? What are we looking at here? It can't be much. You have yeah, to think it's I was gonna just say, can't be. He, he's, he's a rolled defenseman in for, for a non-playoff team making less than a million bucks. Uh, for me, this is like a fourth or a fifth. I was just about to say this, this is because you don't have to worry about any type of money come going out. This is you got Curtis McDermott for a fourth. It should what, be what, right in that conversation. What's, what's the lowest pick that they'll I, I, take? I mean, historically, Joe Sakic at the trade deadline 
loves giving out a fourth for someone. Yeah, well, so. just he just loves giving out fourth round picks for players. True. So, yeah, T- take take a really low percentage lottery ticket and turn it into something that you can plug into your lineup. Yeah. Do it every time. Yeah, I mean, well, and when it was Colin Wilson, it was a good bet. When it was Curtis McDermott, you're like, meh. Right. Not but as Luke, good a bet. Luke Shen is just, he, he's just an insurance policy for everything that you're doing. Yep. And and with the contract for next year. You cross that bridge when you get there, yeah. kind of. Oh, and even if, if things went horribly wrong, you could easily the contract move contract is variable. <laughs> you could easily move him over the summer and probably recoup the pick. Yep. So, it's... The high, the, the big thing here is that the high end doesn't exist. You're not talking about a guy that's going to play 20 minutes. Hard ceiling, you. super low risk. That yeah. it, it really is that straightforward. With yep. Luke Shen. And like I said, my my appeal or my interest in this was a lot higher a few months ago when Vancouver was not part of this conversation. Yeah. So. They're not not that they're knocking on the door right now, but right. they're but they're not like that, out of it. Yeah. That Pacific Division has turned into such muddy it's water. A, it's a sludge of bad hockey that, between yeah. even even its second second even place. Calgary has cooled off so much. Well, that, Calgary, I mean, no Calgary way, they, is, they won ten in a row. Calgary, Calgary but, is it's Vegas that slipped, and it's Calgary that's kind of taken over. But like, you're right. Are you trusting I, Calgary? Like this is no, the best. Stretch I don't of the trust year Calgary. And, that's the real conversation. And come come deadline time, what does that division look like? Because right now, one through six, you're just kind of like, eh. And, and the thing is, what happens in the wild cards in the West? Does it end up with two from the Central again? One of them is but, absolutely going to the Central. But is the second one? of them for does sure the is going to the Central. And the second there, one is. Yeah. yeah. So I think Vegas gets in, no problem. But yeah. they're three points. They're, they've only got a three point cushion. Um, Again, I, I'm not. It, I don't think it's going to be an actual problem. But just to even if add, Vegas ends up second seed, it's like, well, again, I, like I said, I, I don't. I, and I still think there's a great chance they win that division. But just kind of adding to that's how muddy the waters are in that division yeah. is that Vegas you is don't really know. losing back to back games away from being on the outside looking in three weeks till the deadline. Think they'll get in, but. It's become have, a really they have interesting real problems, division, though. With no, like Mark Stone's now out. They've got a goaltending problem because Robin Leonard's hurt. Yep. So yeah. that's their big problem. That was that was the thing that it's they just, weren't planning it, for. If, all if, this cute shit that they did. And if you're Vancouver, you right. are looking at all of that, saying you're doing that. Is, math. is there a vulnerability? Is, this, is it really worth getting a, a 2023 fourth round pick from Colorado to give up Luke Shen? Right. And the, and or we're going to try and sneak into the postseason right now. And get bopped by right. Colorado as the eighth seed. That's enough. This this series is supposed to be out about why the Avs should trade for people, not why it's not going to happen. So let's just stop the video right here. Before the only we... the only it's with the Canucks is one of the few. The Canucks and Stars players are the only two. The only two player. The only players on this list where it's like you those know, teams. We'll, we'll those see teams have to make mode. decisions. And, yeah. and, and for the record. Yeah. Based on when we're recording this video, by the time it posts, those teams might be out of the playoff race. We don't, yeah. we don't know. Yeah, but when you're still three weeks out, yeah. So definitely some questions there. But this one, for real, I promise we're getting into more big names, real top six, top four type guys. Yeah. For if the Abs want to make a big splash at the deadline, so keep it locked into this playlist. Check out everything from the Abs trade deadline frenzy. We will be back with, uh, I believe, a forward is next, but I've probably been been wrong almost every single time on these outros. So we'll be back with another video.